Gran Turismo 4 is filled with a lot of challenging license tests. But in this video, I'm going to show you how you can gold all of the B license tests in this game. If one of these tests helped you, be sure to like and subscribe. Let's get started. For license B1, you're just going to max out the accelerator until you hit 28 miles per hour and then upshift. You're going to drive all the way down to the 100 meter marker and brake just before the middle of the zero. Then turn in while braking so you slow down as fast as possible. B2 will be no different than B1. Just head down the straight and brake in between the 100 meter marker and the short white line. Brake and turn to slow down as fast as possible and finish the test. For B3, you'll need to set yourself up for the best possible line heading into turn one. Drive to the right side of the track as you head down the straight. Turn in at the start of the curb and hit the brakes at the start of this skid line while aiming for the inside of the turn. Gently release the brakes to maintain your grip and straighten out as early as possible to release the TCS. Now you just climb up that hill and finish the test. Here will also be no different than the previous test. You'll do the same thing by driving to the right side and heading down to the straight, but this time you'll actually break just a little bit after the previous references we used. You'll still need to gently release the brakes, as well as straightening out as early as possible, again to release the TCS. Then climb up the hill and finish the test. B5 will have you focus on two techniques, momentum and slipstream. These techniques are crucial to making this test as easy as possible. Stick behind the pace car until the screen hits these yellow barriers. Turn in and then brake when you're around the middle of the track width. Get back on the power to keep your speed above 38 miles per hour and straighten out as wide as the car will let you. Follow the pace car down the S-bend before cutting the second half, coming in wide to the tight hairpin. You want to brake right as you touch the middle of the track while aiming for the inside of the hairpin. Here I brake really late, but instead of cutting in I maintain my momentum and push the car as wide up the track as I can. Before the next turn, you'll just dip your tires into the grass as you turn in to get that extra rotation for a faster exit. Lift if you need more rotation and then follow the pace car. And remember, if you aren't turning, you're drafting the pace car to keep your speed as high as possible. Brake at the end of this dirt trail and turn in at the same time. Again, put the power back on halfway through and build up your speed before the final turn. You'll want to start turning at this space in the shadow. Blend between minimal brake and throttle inputs to get a slow in, fast out line before crossing the finish line. B6 will be no different than B1 or B2. Just keep the accelerator pinned until you get to your new brake reference, which will be this short white line past the 400 meter board. And make sure you keep turning while you brake to stop as fast as possible. For B7, you'll actually want to start in second gear to prevent any wheel spin. Then you'll drive all the way down to your new brake reference, which will be in between the 830 and 840 meter mark. Brake and turn like usual to slow down as fast as possible, and the test will be done. B8 is going to test our slow in fast out technique. Brake in between the 50 board and the entrance to the turn, and when you're slow enough, get back on the power to hit a late apex, exiting as wide as possible to maximize your forward momentum. And staying in second gear here will actually maximize your speed more than upshifting to third. Be careful with oversteer in B9. Brake just past the 50 meter board, but only power out once you've hit the middle of the turn. Pay attention to your car's rotation to not force any oversteer and drive straight to the finish line. B10 is going to continue the same techniques from B5 in the Mini. Cut the first turn and prep for the Andretti hairpin by getting on the outside of the track. Then turn halfway between the one and two markers and brake just before the one marker. Maintain minimal inputs to maximize your rotation and carry as much speed as possible. The straighter the exit, the faster you'll be. Before the next turn, head to the left side to be on the outside and look for the one board. Turn in here and begin braking once you hit the middle of the track. Power to the outside and stick to the edge. Turn when you're halfway between the one and two markers and utilize your brake to make the turn. Then maintain the pace car's line into the left-hander. 
Wait to turn in until you hit the 2 board and break once you've hit the 1 board. Get as much slipstream as possible, starting at the apex and up the hill. You'll want to abuse as much of the track limits here as possible, so break and turn at the 1 board. Get back behind the pace car and continue up the hill. Before the corkscrew, watch for the 2 board and slam your brakes. Don't begin turning in until you've hit the 1 board. It's okay to take corkscrew narrow like this, but it's not ideal. Once completed, get back to the right side for the left-hander. The moment you lose sight of this tree, start lifting to prioritize making contact with the apex. I start lifting a little too late, but you'll see how little that mistake does to the final time. Cut back over to the left side for the penultimate turn. Turn in between the 1 and 2 board, and break at the 1 board. Keep up your momentum as much as you can heading into the final turn, and stay with the pace car until the 2 board. You want to actually brake just before hitting it, and make sure to keep your exit as straight and wide as possible. Then, you'll stick with the pace car and finish your test. For B11, you'll want to stick to the inside and stay in first gear to maximize your speed up the hill. Shift up to second gear before crossing the crest and stay to your right. Brake and turn right as the track starts to swing left and accelerate while hard turning to maximize your rotation out of the corner. Other than that, just keep it clean and cross the line. B12 is very simple. Just get to the left side of the track before you get over the top of the hill. Then, once you touch this patch of grass, turn in and aim for the inside of the corner. Don't let off on the gas, but make sure to listen to your engine to prevent too much power loss. Then, straighten out and jump the hill to finish the test. For B13, stick to the left as you drive into the final turn of Sakuba, but try not to get too shocked by this car's understeer. Turn in at this space in the shadow, and aim for the inside. Blend between the brake and the throttle to hit this curb as late as possible. Power out to hit the outside curb as much as you can, without touching the grass. Start off by getting to the right after the first turn. Keep to the edge until you pass the guardrail and meet with the tree shadow. Turn in to hit the inside of the turn, but break once you're about to cross the solid white line. Power out when you're confident you can hit the apex of the turn without needing to live. Stick to the right side of the track and finish the test. Or you could also just... B15 will be the last of the pace car tests, but will still maintain the same techniques used in the previous two. Follow the pace car, staying just to the right of it to keep in the slipstream, and get to the left side of the track after passing the gantry before turn 2. Turn and brake after passing the left curb, aiming to make contact with the curb ahead. Power out and return to the pace car's lawn. Watch for the crest and turn in. Apply some pressure to the brakes to hit this curb, then turn in to hit a late apex at the top of the hill. Stick to the outside for the next turn. Break and turn at the end of the light grass, again getting on the power halfway through. Stay just to the outside of the pace car while heading into the carousel. After passing over the crest, turn in and break throughout the turn to hit the apexes into and out of the downhill carousel. Return to the pace car's line heading into the hairpin. Break just after you meet up with these groups of signs and turn in to hit the inside. Maintain your momentum throughout the tight turn, and get a straight exit heading into the S's. For this section, you'll want to aim to place your car as far up inside the curb as you can before turning into the next turn. The main goal is not to turn in until you've hugged as much of the curb as you can. Don't be afraid to power out early on the last bend either. Since you can't see past the hill, you'll have to be brave with this exit. Quickly get back in the pace car's draft to build your speed up again. Stick to the inside till the change in angle and turn for the next corner. Stab the brakes past the middle of the track and gently apply the throttle until you're confident to hit the outside without touching the sand. Head into the penultimate turn and be sure to avoid the cones on your left. Brake at the second cone and turn in to make a U-shaped trail throughout the hairpin. Exit as straight as you can and follow the pace car all the way to the finish.
Lastly, get your left tires to dip into the grass to maximize the rotation in this first turn. Aim to be on the outside of the track before the next turn and try to be as straight as possible heading into it. Brake just before you pass the dirt patch and aim for a later apex to get a straighter exit. Work your way to the outside and head down the straight to finish the test. And there you have it, all 16 license tests golded for the B license. Now you can finally cruise around in your Honda S500 you always wanted, or the Mazda Kusabi for the silver prize. However, this was only the first of the five tests in the game. So click this video if you want to learn how to gold all tests in license A.